In this Earth Day special, we'll be taking part in the energy challenge by going over some of my favorite home automations that I use to help me save energy. Saving energy not only is an easy way to help protect the Earth, but it also helps save money on my gas and electric bills. And if you haven't heard about the energy challenge yet, don't worry, as I will be going over what the energy challenge is, how you can get involved, and how you can enter in to win a one year if this then that pro subscription later in this video. While I use SmartThings Home Automation Hub running WebCore for all my automations, everything I will cover in this video should be possible on other platforms as well. This includes Hubitat, which can also run WebCore, and Home Assistant. I'll have links in the description below for several of my other videos that go into greater detail on how I set up most of these automations I'm about to cover. And make sure to stick around to the end of the video, as I will be going over two bonus automations that can help you prevent the possible waste of tens of thousands of gallons of water, which is a precious resource we should be trying to save. For our first smart home automation we'll be going over, we're going to be taking a trip outside. For this automation, we'll be controlling our outdoor lights to only turn on when needed and turn off when they are no longer needed automatically. What I've noticed over the years is that there are typically two major ways that people who want their porch lights on at night go about doing so, which ends up being very wasteful. The first is by just leaving the lights on 24-7. This not only wastes electricity during the day, when the lights aren't being used, but also causes the light bulbs to burn out faster, which also generates more waste for landfills. The second way is by having a timer on their lights, which does help with not wasting as much electricity, but because of daylight savings time, and the time for sunset and sunrise being different throughout the year, the timer will often be set for long periods of time to cover all the different scenarios within that year, meaning the lights are left on for large stretches of time when they aren't being used. So instead of all of that, we are going to use our smart home to make our outside lighting control to be as efficient as possible. For my outdoor lights, I have several regular light bulbs that utilize a smart switch for control, but you might be better off with a few smart bulbs instead. This automation is actually pretty straightforward, which is what makes it so great. Within the SmartThings rule engine, you can have your if statement start a period of time before or after sunset, and your then would simply have the lights you want to turn on. You want to do the same for turning the lights off, and you can either use the sunset attribute or set a specific time for the lights to turn off. Within WebCore, I have a single if statement that will turn on my outside lights 15 minutes after sunset and turn them off at 4.30 a.m. every morning. Because the value for sunset is updated every day based on my location, it will follow along as the days get longer and shorter. And if you wanted to take this home automation to the next level, you could set it up to have the light turn off earlier at night and then only turn on if an outdoor motion detector or detectors get triggered during a certain time frame you set. The second automation I use that helps save energy is automatic closet light control. Another straightforward automation with the help of contact sensors and either smart light bulbs or smart light switches. And what it'll do is turn on a closet light when a door is opened and turn it off when the door is closed. This one seems like a very basic automation and it is, but it's probably one of my most appreciated automations. At any time there's a dead contact sensor on a closet door, it's immediately noticed because of it. This automation really is a big quality of life improvement, but also helps save energy because of oftentimes, at least for me, I might forget to turn off the closet light after turning it on and it could be left on for hours. I also occasionally will have my hands full and not able to turn the light off. To set up this energy saving home automation and smart things, all you need is a routine with an if statement of a closet door contact sensor opening and a then statement of turning on the closet light. You'll also need to make a routine for when the contact closes and to turn the light off. And this will need to be repeated for each closet light you want to control. A quick tech tip for you. If you don't want to use the rule engine in smart things for this kind of automation, you could use the smart lighting smart app. Smart apps were recently moved within the SmartThings app, so to find them, you'll need to go into the Automations tab, click on the plus sign at the top right hand side of the screen, and click on Add Routine. Next at the bottom of the screen, click on Discover. Here you will find all the different smart apps you can add, both custom and SmartThings provided, including Smart Lighting. The next automation we are going to be taking a look at is a light tracking and notification automation. This automation will notify when lights are left on for too long based on the type of light and time of day. This can be helpful in a few different situations. For example, you might have younger kids who haven't quite yet mastered remembering to turn lights off when they aren't being used. Or maybe you're just like me who happens to be forgetful sometimes. No matter the reason, having lights left on for long periods of time wastes electricity. So being notified when lights might be left on accidentally is a good idea. For me, I have several different types of rooms such as kitchen, bedroom, closet, and other. Lights within the kitchen group will not trigger a notification unless they are left on for 30 minutes or longer between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. Likewise, between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m., a notification will not be triggered unless any light is left on for two hours. For any bedroom lights, they will trigger after being left on for two hours or longer. For any closet, the window is just five minutes before a notification is sent. And for my other lights, that one is currently set to 15 minutes. I've been looking into ways to bring this automation to the next level. 
maybe with some motion sensors or something. So if you have any suggestions on how to make it better, I'd love to hear your ideas in the comments below. And while you're at it, make sure to click on the like button for a 10% increase in battery life for all your contact sensors. The fourth energy saving home automation we'll be looking at involves your thermostat and with the help of contact sensors helps determine if energy is being wasted based on a few different conditions. The automation itself has three main tasks. The first task has to do with door and window contact sensors and if any door or window is left open for five minutes while your HVAC is running, a notification will be sent letting you know that you're wasting energy. If five minutes passed after the notification is sent and any windows or doors are still left open, then the HVAC is turned off, its state is saved, and a notification is sent. To make life easier, once all the doors and windows are closed, the automation will then turn the HVAC back on to its previously set state. The second task is triggered when the heat or AC is turned on and if the set temperature of the thermostat could be reached by opening some windows. If this is the case, the notification is sent suggesting to do so. For example, if you have your heat set to 68 degrees but it's 73 degrees outside, you'll get a notification suggesting to open your windows. Likewise, if you have your AC set to 75 degrees and it's 73 degrees outside, you'll get a notification suggesting that you could open your windows to cool your house down and help conserve energy. The third task of this automation will turn off the HVAC system and these smart smoke detectors detect smoke. This is intended to help reduce the possibility of smoke being spread through the house. This doesn't really have anything to do with saving energy, so consider it a bonus automation. For SmartThings users, the first task can be completed with the exception of being able to restore the original state of the thermostat. Instead, you'd want to make two automation routines, one to return the thermostat to cool during the summer, and one for returning the thermostat to heat during the fall and winter timeframe. There are a few different ways you could accomplish this, so let me know in the comments below what your ideas are. The other two tasks can be completed using the native SmartThings automation engine as well. Just keep in mind that if you have a lot of doors and windows you want to use for this automation, you'll be spending a decent amount of time adding them within the SmartThings app. This automation really does show the power and flexibility WebCore has when it comes to rule creation. The next smart home automation takes advantage of contact sensors, but install it in a way you might not have considered before, on your refrigerator. While a lot of newer models do include a built-in alarm, a lot of the alarms are not that loud, so you might not hear it if it does go off. Or worse, like mine, the built-in door open contact isn't sensitive enough and will think the door is closed even when it's left open just enough. You might be thinking why it'd be worth spending the money on a few contact sensors when a newer model refrigerator doesn't really waste a lot of electricity when a door is left open, and it's a valid question. The bigger opportunity comes from if a fridge or freezer door is left open for extended periods of time. This could cause food to spoil that needs to be thrown out, creating unnecessary food waste. It's also possible, depending on where your thermostat is, that a left open freezer door could lower the temperature enough to cook down the heat which over the course of a long weekend vacation ends up wasting a lot of energy. Setup of the automation itself is pretty straightforward. Simply set a time for how long the contact needs to be left open and further then send a notification. You could even take this further by having lights flash to try to get your attention or maybe even trigger an alarm. The more complex aspect of this automation is going to be contact sensor placement. You wanna make sure that the contact sensor is placed just far enough away from its magnet so that it doesn't trigger that it's closed too early creating a false positive of being closed. You also don't want it too far apart when closed where it will generate false alerts when it's actually closed. A few of those and you'll start to ignore them. For these, I recommend using some form of museum putty. It'll make it easier to adjust the distance several times while testing to zero in where you need the contact sensor to be placed. Just make sure to try the putty somewhere on the fridge that you don't care about to make sure it won't ruin the finish. An issue you might run into is a model like mine with multiple doors. At a quick glance, I would probably need four different contact sensors because I have four different doors. Luckily, you can combine contact sensors in certain situations, and for mine, I actually only need two. With French door configurations, you can put the sensor on one side of the door and a magnet on the other. This means if either or both doors are open, the contact will be open, and will only be closed when both doors are closed. With the freezer and middle drawer combination like mine, I can do something similar as with the French doors, but on the side. Having the contact sensor on the bottom freezer drawer with the magnet on the middle drawer means if either are opened, the contact sensor will be open too. If you have a standing or chest freezer, I highly recommend setting this automation up for them as well. They tend to be less visible, so when they're left open, they usually will go unnoticed for a long period of time. An issue you might run into with the standing or chest freezer is that the gap between the door and the body of the freezer might be too far for a sensor to be able to detect a magnet. For me, I printed a little general purpose mount that allows for easily adjusting where a magnet sits to allow for a closer contact. Now I have a link for the file in the description below for anyone who might want to use it. 
With the mount and some museum putty, I'm able to get the magnet as close as needed so that it works correctly. We've talked about several different home automations you can set up to help save energy, which in turn helps protect the planet. From setting up an advanced timer that only turns on your outdoor lights when needed, to turning off your furnace or AC when any doors or windows are left open for too long. There are many ways to save electricity and even gas in terms of HVAC. With all the smart home automations we covered, I estimate that I save roughly 1,368 kilowatt hours per year. Using the average US rate of 10.42 cents per kilowatt hour, that's a savings of roughly $142 a year in just wasted electricity. And while this may not seem like a lot of energy savings, when as many people as possible join in on the effort, the amount of energy savings through home automation grows very quickly. That's why myself and several other smart home creators have teamed up to take part in the energy challenge to help celebrate Earth Day. As part of the challenge, we've all created videos showcasing one or more of our favorite home automations that we use to help save energy. Not only that, but you can take part in the energy challenge yourself as well. To take part in the energy challenge, go on the link in the description below labeled energy challenge where you can tell us what automations you use to help save energy. Over the next year, the totals will be tallied up and posted on a dedicated energy challenge website hosted by If This Then That. If you're worried about providing information to If This Then That or anyone else, make sure to read through the terms and conditions before entering your information. Make sure to put that you were sent there by the Bearded Tech Guy for your chance to win one of 10 one year If This Then That Pro licenses. And if you don't want to fill out the form for any reason, but want to share what your automations are for saving energy, make sure to let me know in the comments below. As promised, here are two home automations you can set up to help prevent the possible waste of thousands, if not tens of thousands of gallons of water, and the possible destruction of valuables and your home. The first automation will keep track of the inside temperature of your home, and if it drops to an unsafe level, automatically turn your furnace on to warm the house. This is done to prevent pipes from freezing, which will ultimately cause them to burst. Typically for a situation like this to happen means the house is left unattended for a period of time when it's very cold out, which means a burst pipe gushing water all over could go unnoticed for days or even weeks. A standard half inch pipe can spill out 10,000 gallons of water in just a few hours. So as you can imagine, an unnoticed burst pipe can not only waste a very large amount of water, but it can also destroy your home very quickly. And while there may be other structural changes needed to your home to truly prevent a burst pipe, making sure that the heat is at a reasonable temperature will go a long way. I actually experienced something like this when I was looking for a house. It was the middle of winter and the home was unoccupied. Getting up to the door, you could kind of hear what sounded like water running, but with a lot of intensity. Sure enough, opening the front door confirmed we did in fact hear water, which was unfortunately coming from a burst pipe in the ceiling with the entire home's floor covered in several inches of water. You want to figure out what temperatures are right for your area, but mine is set to that if the house gets below 58 degrees, the furnace will turn on and send a notification. For SmartThings users, you could easily accomplish this within the SmartThings Routines Rule Engine, and for me, I just have an extra if block within my advanced HVAC control piston within WebCore. The second smart home automation we'll be taking a look at is leak notification and flood prevention. This one is another pretty simple automation, but one I don't think enough people realize that they can do. Simply put out leak sensors in common areas that could possibly have a water leak and set up a notification to be sent when they are triggered. Common places for a leak sensor would be under a sink, behind a toilet, under a refrigerator if it has a water line, under a utility sink, near or in a sump pump, near a hot water tank, and under a washer or dishwasher if you have one. Being notified of a possible leak as soon as possible helps you prevent further damage. To take things further, you could install a smart water valve, which there are several different types of. The smart water valve would then get triggered to shut off if any of the water sensors detect water. If you're interested in more in-depth videos going over how I set up the automations in this video, make sure to check out the playlist right here. Thank you for watching.